Have you ever experienced fear and terror because you have just seen something that isn't there? <laughs> I most certainly have. I've had those experiences and I bet you have too, where either when you were young, you went running into your parents' bedroom because you just saw something that wasn't there, uh, or you went to tell your husband or your wife, or it's like you see something and you're at work and it's like, okay, I don't think I better tell anybody <laughs> what just happened. I remember once when I was driving my car and my daughter was in the passenger seat and uh, it was dark and there were the, um, we call the street lights and I'm driving along and all of a sudden I just hit the brake because someone went running in front of me and I didn't want to hit them with my car. And then I tried to recover quickly by getting my foot up off the brake and going, oh, I thought I saw something. She goes, that's okay, mom. You don't have to pretend. I hate it when spirits run in front of my car too. <laughs> and so I love it because yeah, that can happen. How many have you, how many of you have done that where you're driving at night and you see something and when you look again, it's not there. It's very terrifying. It's very fear provoking. It causes your root chakra to fly open. It causes your aura to fly out. It causes your adrenal glands to kind of kick on. And now, and now all of a sudden you've got this surge of cortisol that's flowing through your body. And when that cortisol gets triggered, it's telling you to run for your life. But now you're in your bedroom, it's late at night, and you're turning the lamp on because you're too afraid to have the lamp off and you can't sleep the whole night. Yeah, part of it is you're terrified, but the other part is you've just activated all this cortisol into your system and you just want somebody to come rescue you and help you. Um, and just tell you it's gonna be better. And a lot of times you shut down your intuition. So my name is Nancy Rebecca, and this is what I do. I teach people about intuition and psychic ability. And more often than not, uh, individuals will not wanna take my classes because they're like, I don't wanna see. I don't wanna see. I don't wanna see spirits. Well. I just want to tell you that not everybody sees spirits. Uh, that's not everybody's style. But I remember when I was young, I remember, I think my first sighting of a spirit, I was probably not much more than four years old. And uh, I felt some, I, I just woke up for some reason. I remember it was dark. I was in the room by myself. I woke up. And then suddenly I saw this woman come through the doorway and start moving towards my bed. And I remember, you know, getting under the blankets and I, I think I was, I call it the silent scream because I was too frightened to even scream, held really still, had the blanket over my head and that fetal position. And somehow, somewhere I finally fell asleep and I woke up in the morning and finally peeked out. Can you relate to what I'm saying? and then there was nothing there. I don't even think I told my mother about it. And I was only four years old, but I remember it's uh, here at 62, it imprinted me. Um, all these years, I remember this. And then I remember when I was around 12 years old, I had an experience where uh, we were raised in the military, so we had already moved our, all of our things in our house had already been shipped to our next destination. And uh, so we were staying at a friend's house next door. We were going to spend the night and then we we're going to drive in the car as a family to our next destination. So I'm in this house. We've got my parents. We've got the couple that are living there. They've got a young child. There's four of us kids. So I decided to go into the bathroom and I'm gonna take a bath. I'm running the water and uh, suddenly I saw a spirit come right through the wall, right through the bath water, right out the other side and right into another wall. Now by this time, all my clothes are off. Otherwise I would have gone running, screaming, help, I just saw a spirit, or I just saw something that's not there. 
So I kind of took a deep breath and I shook it off and I told myself, remember I, I doubted myself. I had that paralyzing fear, that paralyzing doubt, shook my head and said, I didn't, I didn't see that. And so I went ahead and took the bath, but I remember later kind of pulling my mother aside and saying, um, I just saw this spirit. And my mother was able to tell me that uh, the previous woman that had lived there six months before had committed suicide in that house. And so her um, spirit was unsettled and her spirit was just moving around the house. So my mother was able to validate for me that I wasn't crazy, but she didn't want me to talk about it to anyone else because she didn't want my siblings to be frightened. So I've had, you know, experiences like that that were terrifying. Since I've developed myself though, I'm not afraid of the spirit world and um, I can see them more often. But let me, let's talk about you and what do you do when you see something that's not there? Well, first of all, there are a lot of ascension symptoms that are happening. So remember that ascension is we are expanding in consciousness. Uh, we are awakening to higher levels of wisdom and knowledge at a spiritual level. But what else is happening? Everything around us is getting a higher vibration, a higher frequency. There is a veil between our world and the spiritual world. So it's kind of like the spiritual world lives on their side of the veil and everything spiritual happens over there. And then in our physical world, we uh, live on this side and we go on about our business. Our car broke down. We have a flat tire. We got to run to the grocery store and get milk. Oh, I've got to hurry and get my hair done and my makeup on to get to work. Those are our normal experiences on this side. And most people cannot see on the other side of the veil. And on the other side of the veil, often the spiritual world really doesn't pay attention or can't see us as well, unless they're invited in. Now, there are the spirits, as I said, about uh, the particular woman, her name was Mrs. Hall, who had committed suicide in the house and um, her spirit was unsettled. So she's what's called a um, earthbound spirit. So what that means is, is that she hasn't kind of found her way on the other side of the veil. She hasn't found a portal, an opening. And so her spirit can be kind of stuck here. So uh, sometimes we have spirits kind of wandering around and honestly it happens it's more frequent than not and so that's why i teach students how to help kind of ground you imagine a grounding cord to, to your house and then you imagine bringing a large ball of golden healing light to wash through your house and then just um, that helps kind of clear out any energies of the house so, um, but yes, spirits can wander around and I've talked to a lot of people that know that they have spirits in the house and they can live comfortably with them. But you only see spirits if you are, your intuitive style is more clairvoyant. So that's my dominant style is my ability to see. Now I can see with my eyes open, uh, most people use their clairvoyance when they close their eyes. If you want to know what your dominant intuitive style is, just go to my website and it'll just have a little banner across. It'll say, get the nine page document. You just put in your email um, address and then in your email, you'll get that nine page document that you can fill out to find out what your dominant style is. But yes, if you see something that's not there, that means your clairvoyance is activated. That means your psychic sight is activated. That means your pineal is activated. And so, and we are in an ascension process. So that's getting activated for a lot of us. So five years ago, might not have been normal for you at all to have these experiences 
right now it's very very normal and it's going to happen more frequently so we need to kind of make peace with that a little bit so when i asked the spirit world why is it and this was 20 years ago when i was learning i was like how come you're standing on the side but you i don't see you in front of me and they said if we came in uh just full and stood in front of you it would terrify you it would just absolutely terrify you and you just would completely want to shut down your ability to see spirits so what they will do is they'll start to kind of come in from the side to kind of get you to get a feel for it and then what happens is you you look and nothing's there they didn't disappear but you can't see them when you're overly focused with your eyes. You have to keep your eyes really soft, almost like a daydreamy kind of eye. <clears throat> and so when you turn, you want to keep your eyes soft. You want to slowly turn and then you want to kind of sense, do it very slowly and then sense. So it isn't just earthbound spirits that you see, your guides are with you all the time. And when it's your time, you're going to start seeing your guides and angels that are here to help you. They will always come in just to the side so you can see out of the corner of your eye, but they're not going to stand in front of you because they don't want to scare you. They want to build up your ability to know that they're there in a very loving, supportive way, but they don't want to scare you because they don't want you to shut down your abilities. Who else can you see that isn't there? You can see your loved ones. If your mother or father has passed or your grandparents, or maybe you've had a sibling that's passed, they're going to come in again from the side. They're not going to come in right in front of you. That doesn't mean that that doesn't happen because it does. But for those uh, spirits that are very supportive and very kind and caring and loving and they want healing, they, they really don't want to frighten you. So sometimes I see spirits more times than other times. So what that means is, is the veil is really thin. So the veil is like an energetic membrane between the spirit world and the human world. That veil can be two miles thick. So when you hear the words like the veil is thin, Halloween, for example, it's incredibly thin during October 31st to November 1st, incredibly thin. Uh, but when it's thin, you're able to sense and feel the spirit world more often than not. And then after, so like full moons or certain planetary alignments or eclipses, for example, can cause that veil to get thin. And then after that event, it'll go back to being very thick again. And so often then people will say, I had that experience once, but it never happened again. Well, that means the conditions were just perfect for you to have that experience. I was actually uh, a few days ago, I was walking somewhere and uh, I was waiting for a friend. And so I just kind of sat on this bench waiting for the friend to show up who was about 10 or 15 minutes late. And then just suddenly I just saw uh, kind of out of the corner of my eye and it was probably about mm, maybe 50 feet ahead of me. And I just saw this man, I could kind of, it was kind of more gray. I could see the outline and he had on a hat kind of moving from left to right. And I kind of tracked him, you know, just kind of followed him. And then I went, and then he just disappeared. And it was like, Oh, that was a spirit. And so, again, we're living in a time where you might be seeing it more often. Now, yep, you might see spirits in your house. Yes, you might see um, 
people who used to live in the house a long time ago who since passed and they're just visiting that house. Sometimes you can see children around. It's interesting, my own house is 130 years old and I have never seen a child spirit. I've only seen adult um, spirits. And what's interesting is uh, that the people who used to live here didn't have children, but I actually have a photograph of a girl uh, sitting on the stairs and as a ghost. So anyway, I find that interesting. I'm not quite sure where she came from. Maybe she just likes the energy of my house. But what can you do about it to get the fear down when you see a spirit and you are so terrified and you're so scared, so frightened? Um, let the spirits know you're frightening me, you're scaring me. And you might mean well and everything, but this is my house and I, I'm asking you to leave. I, you need to leave. Um, I don't feel safe with you in here. And it doesn't matter who it is. I, I've had people feel too frightened of angels, of archangels being there, where we can see, I can see an archangel and they're like, I can feel the spirit and I'm too terrified. I want them to go away. It's like, yes, this is your space. I need you to go away. I need you to go away now. And they will, uh, they'll say, oh, I didn't mean to offend you. And they will totally leave. And you can walk through every single room of your house and say, if there's any spirits here, I need you to leave now. So that is usually with a very firm, solid voice. Now you can use sage. So there's lots of things, you know, we can burn tobacco. There's lots of things that you can do. You can smudge the house to help kind of clear any cloudiness away. But again, if they're a high level golden um, guide or angel or your loved ones from the other side, that doesn't mean that that smudge is going to clear them out. So again, you have to just say firmly that you want them to leave. But I'm an intuitive psychic teacher. So let me just offer another option here. And that other option is Take some classes with me. Learn to develop your intuition. Learn to develop your skill and ability to communicate with the spirit world. Learn how to keep a safe environment because what it probably means is you're waking up to your intuition and that is a beautiful thing. And having awakened to your intuition is a lot of fun as well. And being able to talk to the spirit world is a really cool superpower. <laughs> a really cool superpower to have. But, yep, I was frightened in the beginning. I was really frightened. Um, nope, I don't like spirits to kind of pop out and scare me either. But I've learned and I've cultivated the ability to manage my, uh, my environment that I live in and my own energy. And I'll say, hey, who, who's there talking? Who has something to say? I've cultivated my ability to be able to talk to spirits and you can too. So I've titled this video, Help, I'm Seeing Things That Aren't There Because They Are There. They're just on the other side of the veil. So, Hope that helped. Leave a comment in the comment section. I love reading your stories. If you've had any experiences you'd like to share with me, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button and I will see you again next week.